What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, as you can see, it, uh, my breath. It's a nice cold uh, morning. Had a little uh, ice overnight. So, got a little time today to kind of uh, pick back up on some projects that we were working on at the end of the summer and uh, hopefully be ready for uh, spring racing. So, the main project today is what we're going to be working on is this block right here. So, we were getting ready to get this thing uh, set up to do an epoxy on it. Chris, uh, I think he pronounced his last name Boyet, is uh, he custom made some epoxy for everybody that wants to go this route. And we are going to be doing an epoxy coat instead of a CSS on this particular block. Uh, the you know, epoxy does work you know, very well if done properly. Uh, I've talked to some tuners and they've said they've pushed these things well past 800 horsepower already. Uh, using that epoxy and uh, have done well and no problems. You know, it's all about, of course, you know, putting them all together right. But either way, uh, I know there is one or two videos out there on doing this epoxy, but you know, not everybody knows those guys or who to follow. So we thought we'd do the process on this. Uh, I call it my build number two. And, uh, and this is going to be a LS B18B1 bottom end. And of course, it gets a uh, GSR head and set of CP pistons 81.5 millimeter and a set of manly rods uh, this particular setup is going to be running my old turbo so it's going to be running a uh, plm top mount manifold tile 44 millimeter wastegate 62 or 66 62 uh, turbo and uh you know our goal is to make 600 plus on this build it's going into a 1997 1996 Civic EK hatch, and uh, our goal definitely is to get the car down to 10 second territory. But first thing first, we gotta get this thing pocketed and go from there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rough um, the edges up all the way around the cylinder bore. So what you gotta do, you know, as you see out here, I got a uh, air rotary tool with a uh, diamond bit, and I'm just gonna go around insides all the way around and just kind of score the walls a little bit, rough it up. That way that epoxy, you know, has something else to adhere to. You know, one important note, it is uh, cold. Uh, I've actually got a room in my shop that I've got set up to be able to uh, climate control. And um, it needs to be a minimum of 60 degrees, you know, preferably, you know, 70 or above. And uh, that is our goal today is get this thing done. And I, like I say, crank the temperature up in that room and let her bake. So let's get this process, process started. Okay, and what I've done here, as you can see, I'll try to get some close-ups if I can, is I didn't take any metal away. I just cleaned all the old uh, coolant junk, stuff like that off, and uh, just kind of give a little scuffing on the walls. You know, nothing that'll take metal away. Like I say, all you're supposed to do is clean it up and maybe make it a little more coarse so the epoxy has something nice to adhere to. So, of course. Anyway, let's uh, get this thing on a good level surface and let's get the epoxy in it. Okay, we're getting pretty close now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it all leveled out. And then uh, take a measurement, make sure we're at the three-quarter. If it's uh, if I actually feel too much, what I'll probably do is just take a, uh, a vacuum and suck a little bit of it out. But I think I'm going to be pretty darn close, you know, first try. Like I say, the measurement that was sent, or the amount that was sent, was based off a of three-quarter inch top ring being done. Which, uh generally gives plenty of strength at the top without taking too much uh, 
away from the water jacket and you still maintain your cooling. So let me get this uh, measured out and see what we got. Okay, I'm about to mix in the, uh, the hardener with it. As you see, I got everything in a, uh, in a bag here. Just use a good quality Ziploc bag. I'm gonna pour this hardener in. And uh, after I get all mixed, it should turn a blue color. Um, just like mixing Bondo or anything else, once you get everything mixed right, you always turn that, that one distinctive color that uh, everybody knows. So I'm gonna zip this thing up. And now I can just kind of start putting it together. And as you see right here, you can already see the color starting to change which is what we want to see. Oh yeah. Make sure to get it all. Make sure it gets mixed up really, really good. And what I like doing it in bags like this, and you know, I've seen other people do it, you just get, uh, you know, you can always stir it with a stir stick, but when you do it like this, you can really put your, you know, meat it up and do a lot better with it. You got a lot more control. there I've got a couple little spots I can see here that's not changed color on me yet but that's about to change and as you uh, put the hardener in it it actually becomes a little more liquefied when it comes in the can and of course it, this does come with instructions um, that you can follow but once you put the hardener on it I've noticed it becomes a lot more liquefied so you can actually pour it so all right, I have got that stuff mixed up, I think pretty darn good. And I'm gonna choose one of these corners to work with. And I'm gonna put a little slice in it. And we're gonna put this stuff on just like we're doing a cake. We've reached the end of uh, what we can work with here, and I'll kind of give everybody a showing what we got. I, I left it right underneath the edge of the lip. It gives a just a hair bit of room for uh, the water to still, you know, be on top of it. And uh, I'll need to wait about 30 minutes. Let this circle uh, just uh, kind of. Harden up a little bit, and as you see here, my temperature, I've got it set to, uh, I've got it just over 80 degrees, almost 81 degrees in this little room. So it should set up really nice. And um, look, we're gonna come back in about 30 minutes, peel this tape off and see where we're at. Okay, we're the next day, and man, this thing's set up really nice. So, feels good, it's hard, it's what we want, and uh, Next process is going to be overland. I've got one of my old head gaskets. I always keep an old head gasket laying around. Never know what you, uh, when you're gonna need something for clearing some things or doing things like this. So it's a good habit to at least keep one of your old head gaskets laying around if you got one or can keep one. So I'm making sure everything's lined up. And uh, I wish I had a couple of dowel pins to stick in the holes, but you just have to make sure I don't touch it. 
and then um, we're going to go through and take a magic marker and just mark out where all these water jackets go. So each one will get a you know a water path. So I'm going to do that real quick, and then uh, get it drilled out and get these things drilled out and see what it looks like. Okay, let's see what it looks like when we get this thing marked out. All right, as you see, you got all the uh, markings here, and then. Uh, Biggest thing is you never want to get too close to the edge. You know, you've got to be dead center of this. And then where the uh, larger water pads are, I'll drill two holes side by side where it barely uh, touches and try to get the same, the same water flow as the head gasket. So let me get a drill bit together and uh, we'll come back and drill this guy out. Okay, just finishing up uh, wiping around the holes after I've done the process of drilling it out. And like I say, I used the instructions and went three thirty seconds to drill out everything. And then when I got done, like I say, three thirty seconds is pretty small in this, uh, since the you know even the the five thirty seconds is quite a bit smaller than the hole in the head gasket for water flow. And uh, you know, really just didn't feel in the area we live would get enough uh, water flow or something that small. So, um, so 530 seconds is what I chose. Uh, still, you know, should not have screwed with the uh, integrity or structural strength of it. So, only thing we got to do now is take this thing to the machine shop. They're going to give it a nice deck, bore it, and then uh, we'll be ready to assemble this guy. And now that I got done cleaning everything up here, the only thing I got left is to pull the tape off, pour the sugar out, and then I'm going to run a water, you know, flip it upside down and run water through this guy. Only reason I'm not going to show you guys now is it's 20 something degrees outside. It's very cold and um, it can stay in there with the sugar for a few days until it warms up and then I'll, uh, I'll flush it out right before I take it to the machine shop. As always, I always appreciate everybody watching. You know, my videos are designed to be educational and maybe a little fun um, i don't do this for money just kind of a hobby and try to encourage the next guy to do the same thing and be successful with his build so we're hoping we see everybody out the track this year and race season's only a few weeks away and always great seeing everybody and making you friends but guys until next time and again this is actually a epoxy from uh, Chris Bogart, and at the end of this, I'm going to share his uh, copy of his card in a uh, company, and I will put a link at the below of the of the video, uh, below the title. So again, thank you for watching, and happy racing.